Hello. Good afternoon, everybody. Hope everybody enjoyed their lunch. I really liked the chili. Um, I'd like to thank Katie for allowing an intern to speak at this significant event here. Um, but what I've been working on is a study that asks, how does Forest Stewardship Council standards account for bad habitat? And furthermore, how do the certified forests in Minnesota comply with those standards? So a little bit about what we talked about already today. We know that bats do not maintain a consistent criteria for roosting habitat. However, increasing the amount of snags and other retention elements um, can contribute to roosting habitat. And there's different ways to measure this with standards, uh, either internally or externally. But today we're focusing on the Forest Stewardship Council. Been around since the early 90s, one of the most visible international certifiers for forests. And in Minnesota, we looked at eight forest management certificate holders. And as you can see, they represent a significant amount of land area. And here is the distribution of land area among them. The DNR at the top down to the Aiken County Soil and Water Conservation District. Now all of these certificate holders must comply with the FSC standards to maintain their certification. And this is the framework. It starts with a general principle down to the indicator, which is a more site level specific measure. Determining how these standards account for bad habitat for this study meant finding the appropriate criteria and indicators that account for the habitat components. And so there's 10 principles in FSC. Principle six states that ecological functions and integrity of the forest should be maintained. And then within that principle is the ecological functions criteria. And further defining that, we arrive at the habitat components. And this is what we're interested in. The habitat, habitat components indicator contains language that directly relates to bad habitat. So principle six, criteria three, indicator F, management maintains, enhances, or restores habitat components, including all of these elements, snags, live trees with decay, dead woody material. Now FSC has been around in Minnesota since 97 by yours truly. And um, for this study, we looked at the years from 2005 to the present to give a more relevant um, representation of the trends in these certified forests. There are annual audits to assess the compliance of each certificate holder. If there is an issue, the auditor will report a corrective action re request on the final report. And once it's issued, the certificate holder then becomes responsible for addressing that issue, typically within one year or just before the next annual audit. And it was these audit reports that really were the foundation for this, for this assessment. Uh, we looked through each year's audit reports across all of the certificate holders and pulled out all of the corrective action requests. We documented all of them, but gave specific attention to the habitat components indicators. There are approximately 200 corrective action requests throughout those years, and the majority of which were within the environmental impact principle. And then furthermore, the ecological functions had the majority of those. And now this shows references, and references a corrective action request can reference more than one, more than one standard. So that kind of accounts for that number. And so the ecological functions is what we were interested in. That contains the habitat components indicator. And here it's the results. There was only 12 violations of the habitat components indicator throughout all of those corrective action requests by four of the certificate holders. DNR, Itasca, Lake County, and Cass County. And I, and I highlighted this section because, as you can see, there's a spike 
And 2010 was a year that the standard for FSC was revised, and that may have accounted for a more stringent assessment um, and an increase in those corrective action requests. So some conclusions we might draw from this is that, well, within the FSC framework, uh, forest management in Minnesota has historically complied with um, re retention practices. Um, and it, I think it's important to consider that FSC is a voluntary program and it, all, all of the uh, violations were addressed within one year with the exception of one. So it shows some proactive conservation and um, some of the attitudes about caring for uh, dealing with these issues and making it more sustainable. And if you use this as kind of a model, looking at certification systems as a consistent criteria for, address, for uh, examining forests, um, we could extend this kind of study into other certification systems, uh, particularly the Sustainable Forestry Initiative within Minnesota, and that would cover a whole, a lot more area. Um, so just as a model of analysis. Thank you. Any questions regarding this? <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Um, the, what was the question? I'm not sure I understand the question. The question, the question was, uh, you know, I'm not even sure. Uh, okay. <laughs> Well, this is mostly just in relation to um, the, looking at the proactive management within Minnesota for bad habitat. And this is just one way of analyzing that. Uh, it kind of relates to what Mark was talking about, about documentation of retention practices, how if you look throughout Minnesota, you don't really have specific documentation of those. Um, and so using some kind of analysis like this, you can say, well, these certified forests, which are about 7 million acres, something like 40% of the total forest land, well, this is what they're doing to conserve, um, and they're doing a good job at it. So that's basically what this was trying to address. Yeah. Sure. Um, as far as as far as best management practices, I would say yes. Um, but it also goes in line with what we've been talking about today. If if you if you see these standards as reflecting what Mark was talking.